So the best way that I can think of to explain the properties of logarithms is by connecting them to the properties of exponents. Because the only thing you need to know about a logarithm is that it's just an exponent written in a different form. So if we start with the product rule for exponents, we know that if we have x to the power of a times x to the power of b, the way that we simplify that expression is by adding the exponents together, a plus b. So in this example that I have right here underneath that rule, we have x to the third times x squared. So to apply the product rule for exponents, I need to add the three and the two together. So the answer to the example is x to the fifth. So taking what we know about the product rule of exponents and applying that to the product rule of logarithms. When I see multiplication, I'm supposed to think about addition. So we added the exponents for the product rule for exponents. For logarithms, the natural log of a times b is the same thing as the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. And these are interchangeable. I could say natural log of a plus natural log of b is equal to the natural log of a times b, which could be just written as the natural log of ab. So, like I said, these are interchangeable. You can take it and expand it, as we did here, or you can take the expanded version and condense it like we did here. So let's apply that to our example. We have the natural log of three times two. This is the same thing as you would say the natural log of six. All right, but we want to use the property. So we have the natural log of three times two is the same thing as the natural log of three plus the natural log of two. Similarly, if we started out with the natural log of three plus the natural log of two, we could say that's the same thing as the natural log of three times two, which we know is the natural log of six. So that is the product rule. The quotient rule. The quotient rule for exponents. We know that when we have x to the power of a over x to the power of b, that's the same thing as x to the a minus b. So if I have x to the third over x squared, the rule tells me to subtract the bottom exponent away from the top exponent. So top exponent is always first. 3 minus 2 is 1 and x to the power of one is just x. So this is the answer using the quotient rule for exponents. So quotient rule for exponents, we see division, we think about subtraction. Okay, the same thing is gonna be true for logarithms. The natural log of three over two, you start with the top, natural log of three minus the natural log of two. So these two statements are equivalent. I meant to do the a and b first, but we can apply that right now. The natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Okay, and again, these are interchangeable just like the ones for the product rule. So let's say we were given, this is just another example, the natural log of x minus the natural log of y. This is the same thing as the natural log of x over y. Okay, the first one goes in the numerator and the second one goes in the denominator. So that is the quotient rule. The next rule we have is the product rule. So we know that when we raise a power to a power x to the a raised to the power of b, we're supposed to multiply those powers together, so a times b. For this example here, then we know we need to multiply 3 times 2 together, and this simplifies to x to the 6th. 
okay? So the power rule for logarithms, what do we do to expand that? Well, we can take the power and lasso it around, sling it around to the front and attach it as multiplication. So just like we did for exponents, see we multiplied. We can change this to a multiplication statement, b times the natural log of a. So again, the power lassos down to the front of the expression and you make it multiplication. And then the power is represented in the front as a product instead of as a power. Okay, so the natural log of three squared is gonna be the same thing as two times the natural log of three. And if we were given, this is just another example, if we were given four times the natural log of x, this would be, let me correct this real quick, this would be the same thing as the natural log of x to the fourth. All right, then beyond that, we just have some identities that we can cover. Anytime you have natural log and e next to each other, they simplify to one. They are inverse operators of each other. So when you have natural log and e right next to each other, it simplifies to one. So this is the same thing. If I take the exponent, sling it around front like we did with the power rule. This is the same thing as x times the natural log of e. This is equal to one. So this is the same thing as x times one, which is just x. Okay, so anytime e and natural log are right next to each other, it simplifies to one, and what you have left is what is the result. So for here, we know this is one. If I take the exponent, sling it around front, make it a product, three times the natural log of e, same thing as three times one, which is just three. All right, same thing if you have e raised to a power that is natural log. Okay, e and natural log, when they're right next to each other, again, like this, make a one. So this is just one times x, which is just x. Okay, same thing here. We've got e and natural log, they're right next to each other. So that simplifies to one. So this is just one times two, which is two. So I hope this helps with properties of logarithms and reach out if you still have questions.